Beyond that, um, I've also uh, performed in live theater, Broadway, other, I'm a drama kid from way back. I'm sure we have some in the room, right? How many of you have done other forms of production other than, say, scare acting? Right? Woo, we got a whole room of them. So all of those tools that you've learned in previous experiences are, you're gonna find, roll into what scare acting is, how you can build an immersive character, and what encompasses all of this. So, uh, let's see, my overview. So where to get started? Where do we start? Why would you want to be a scare actor? Whether it's, I need a quick buck, and I need to make money, and they are hiring right now, and at least I know I got a job until the end of November, <laughs> or this is something that you really want to do, somewhere of starting point for some, in regards to either film and television acting, acting within uh, marketing, uh, acting within uh, mod or even uh, beyond acting, modeling, modeling makeups, modeling costuming, learning how to uh, build and craft your own costumes and your own characters, which is we will talk more in this class. Um, so where to go? Um, typically our seasons start right around this time. We all start um, gearing up for haunt. You know, most, I will use the term loosely, but normal people. Um, normies will, they don't start thinking about costumes or characters or any of that until September, October. I have normie friends who are like the, the October 20th. Jen, what are you gonna be for Halloween? <laughs> First of all, I've been celebrating Halloween since June. <laughs> Second of all, this is not just a day for me, this is a lifestyle. And for a lot of us it is. Not just because we like Sierra and not just because we like portraying and, and going into different things, but because we have now built this huge community and all these fun things of uh, this convention. Um, I remember when this convention started, not this particular one, but one beyond it, Scare LA. Previous to that, we had Haunt X, um, where you can go and meet um, haunt characters. And I had, right, do you remember that? You remember Haunt X? Um, and I think back in that day, like we didn't really think to ourselves, this is gonna grow into this almost global thing. If you listen to some of the podcasts, right? We got hot podcasts now, where you can um, see inter or uh, sorry, hear interviews and from makeup artists. We have uh, monsters, uh, designers, costumes. We have all of these things now, where you can be a part of this community. So not only do we have where my home hot KSF, we have Universal. Has anybody scared of Universal around here? Okay, we got one in the audience, Miss um, Noel, who you played La Llorona, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, different from Knott's, right? Has their own... We're not allowed to talk. Exactly. Suck. We will talk a lot more about that. I love we will talk a lot more about, talk a lot more about the, um, the limitations between, say, a corporate haunt versus a home haunt <laughs> versus a day, right? You may, go to, you may be hired by a makeup artist to be like a model at a, say, a convention. Um, and they'll be like, mm, I have something very specific. I want you to portray something. And you kind of have to listen to them. It's not your thing. You are being hired, right, to show off their makeup. So if they want you to stand there and be new, guess what? You kind of got to stand there and be new. <laughs> but you're still, you're still fulfilling that role and you are helping out, you're building that connection. Um, what else could you do? You could do corporate events. I don't know if you guys have noticed nowadays, a lot of times right around that spooky time, right, September, October, um, you'll have your day job. Hey, you're into that weird Halloween thing. Do you know anybody that can come down here? And, like, we're gonna have like a spooky room. Do you have anybody that can, you can start utilizing that into your day job. This is not just a job that before, like I said back in my early odds, you would think about it, it would only be from October, November. Now, we can literally make an entire year, right? We have um, sliding teams now. We did not used to have that before. Back in the day when sliding started, if you've been in the previous um, slider uh, panels here, you know that sliding kind of started as just a way to protect yourself, put on gear, and it has now evolved into full-on shows. Full-on shows, videos. We have uh, personalities that have now evolved through social media, right? We got people that have their own personas that they portray. Um, Bob Trick, from, uh, who started, I believe, at Queen Mary. Uh, trick and treat, no, 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 sorry, the clowns, uh, 
twist in, I'm giving a fright fest, right? Heckles and they, Twitch. Huh? Heckles and Twitch. Heckles and Twitch, thank you so yeah, much. Magic Mountain. A Magic Mountain, fright fest, yes. They started there. Um, we have at our own KSF, we have our, um, our bride, who is very popular and a very iconic character. Um, what I will say when we start to get into building your character, your own signature characters, you kind of got to be careful on what is my character and what is corporate's character, right? At a whole haunt, you kind of have the liberty to build your own character, create your own name, and you can own it because there's no trademark. You're usually volunteering your own time, so the creations and IPs can usually stay within you. Once you start to get into universal, Queen Mary, more corporate, more modern, more visual eyes on them, more, um, what is the word I'm looking for here, more um, popularity, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term. You kind of got to watch how much you're willing to share, right, just like on your socials, um, versus what the company's going to allow you to share, right? You could think you're putting up something very... Um, innocuous, hey, I'm just going into work, blah, 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 and you happen to catch something in the background, right, of your social post. Um, but that does lead us into, um, again, creating a, a full brand. Um, what, sorry. Um, obviously, conventions we've spoken about, corporate home haunts, immersive theater projects, modeling, photography. This is where we can get to talk about a lot of collaboration throughout the year, right? So you can get to know photographers, costumers, and you can build, say, something in December. Krampus is a very um, popular lore for Christmas, right? In Easter, I've seen uh, people make uh, screaming Easter events and scary bunny events. And you can really kind of throw the horror um, and spooky genre onto a lot of things year round now to make this into a full-fledged job, career, um, or what I like to call um, a job or job hobby. Um, it's not quite something that you do all the time, but it's, an, it's something that you get to do um, throughout the year that you are now no longer limited within just the spooky seasons. So, being that this is a job, so at a corporate or haunted event, um, you will likely uh, sign a non-disclosure agreement. You'll likely have to be within the guidelines of their costume if they're providing costuming to you, right? Versus some of the wonderful things we are seeing out here, right? Like look at your wonderful costume. Can I, can I use you as an example? Come on up here. Can we give her a round of applause, please? kind of uh, works through um, this this job in itself. Um, so if we wanted her to say, be creepy. <laughs> now she's not angry, she's not sinister, right? She looks pretty happy, <laughs> but yet it's uneasy. It's why I wanted to bring her up first. Um, because a lot of what you're going to be asked to do once you get contracted into a maze or street zone or into an event, you're going to be given a role, generic role, clown, right? Um, what is going to make that clown yours though? What's going to make it special? Um, if you are in a maze versus a street zone, we do have some experience here, right? What, do, what am I talking about when I say a maze versus a street zone? Someone give me an example of a maze. Full life. Maze runner, 
What? Room 13. Room 13. Okay, so at Notre Dame Farm, we have a maze called Room 13. What is a maze? If you had to describe a maze to somebody, what would it be? It would be like you're kind of in a room, like scaring, scaring people, as opposed to a street zone. You're like outside, you can run at people, you can. So you're inside, you're in an enclosed space, you're uh -huh. in a building, right? So we can throw Sparrow into, say, like a clown scene or a circus scene, right? We can throw her in there, she can stand there, people walk by, oh hey, good clown, cool. But what's gonna make it, those, you have five seconds in a maze, right? You've got people are running through. What could she do to make her clown jump out, stand out? Um, what could she do to make it um, signature to her? Hit the wall. Mm -hmm. Hit the wall. No. Hit the wall? Is that what you said? Hit the wall? Okay, using your surroundings, right? Using that, is there something she can hang on? Is there something she can like pose herself on. What else could she use? Vocalization. Uh -huh. Vocalization, right? She could use her, her own voice. She can she can build a character voice. Is this a little girl clown? Is it a gonorrhea clown? Is it a, you know, is she gonna do something like um, little, uh, not little girl voice, but um, more, more squeaky and high pitched, you know? Um, or is she gonna be like, hey man, what are you doing around here? You know, what, is she going to use that kind of shock and awe, right? You have your hand up, what's up? Kind of props. Props, all right, props. The way she moves her body. The way she moves her body. So this is when we're gonna talk about going beyond your costume, right? So you have your costume, great costume. What if you can't show your face, right? Not every face, You're, we're not gonna be able to show our, our wonderful makeup face every time, right? Sometimes we're going to have our face is covered. So in that, been using your body in a different way. So let me, let's see, somebody without a costume on. <laughs> and if anybody wants to volunteer, you, come on up. they don't know is that it's like five of you, they're all five one wearing the same mask, right? Um, so you, there's a really great opportunity in those moments within a maze to work with your fellow cast, not only to um, track guests, not only to um, create diversions for each other, not only to um, work together as a team to break people, because I'm going, and when I mean break people, I mean, um, <laughs> I mean, break uh, your guest as in a scare, right? So one scary zombie, 
very scary. One scary zombie, then all of a sudden, the second one that manifests over here because he was paying attention, terrifying. Don't say that. Then all of a sudden, a third one that comes out of a bush um, because he was also paying, he, he or she was also paying attention of what is going around in their surroundings. Also, absolutely heartbreakingly terrifying. You will see people, grown men, double your size, yeah. absolutely lose themselves when you use, when you use your um, elements of surprise at their at your greatest disposal. Best part. It is the best part. <laughs> best part. And let's talk about that, right? Let's talk about what brings us back every year, right? Bringing is it power? Do you think? To some, right? Is it performance? Is it, is it, it's the fun. That is actually my last slide, which is have fun, which, uh, but we'll get to that. But yeah, it's the fun of it. It's the controlled environment of it, right? It's that kind of predatory, I'm in danger, but it's fun because I know nothing's not really gonna happen, but you're really not gonna chase me, but don't really chase me. Um, and we all absolutely love it, right, every year. But within that, what happens? We get adrenaline. We get sleepless nights. We get a lot of us, like I had spoken to, I had spoken about earlier, is that we don't get to do this throughout uh, the year. We do it for a concentrated time, and we're usually doing it on top of things like another job, a class, um, uh, or a job and a class. I know I've, I've had those seasons where we're doing multiple, triple things to um, get and make sure that we can do this job as well. Um, in That is to say that what um, I want to talk about next is taking care of your through the season, right? You got the job, you've been kept, you know you're either going to be in a maze, so enclosed or out roaming on the street. So now what you got to do? You got to start conditioning. <laughs> and I see some of you like, oh. <laughs> right? We don't very typically are there jobs that we have to condition for, whether it's our voices, whether it's our bodies, whether it's just training ourselves to be up late at night, right? Most of us don't stay up till two, three, four in the morning scrubbing our faces, right? Typically on a night, you know, on, on, on any given job. Um, for, this, for this job, totally normal. You will be, if your event closes at 12, you're likely not getting off the street until 12.30 or maybe 11, if you're lucky, you'll be getting off before then at about 11.30. Then you gotta get out of everything, now it's midnight. Now you gotta get to your car, now it's 12.30. Now you gotta get home, and if you're lucky, you live close by. If not, you, you gotta commute on you. Now it's one o'clock, and now you gotta get up at 7 a.m. to get to your day job. Oh, let's do this for nine weeks, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, lots of cheering. Um, but you got to start, and can you condition yourself for lack of sleep? Yes, you can. Do I recommend it? Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I do as I say, not as I do, because if you do see me during the run, I am usually like, what the no. so I'm like the hall shadows is going off again. Oh, okay. uh, are, we, are we all good? That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Somebody will come get us, right? If the building's actually on fire. <laughs> So, uh, let's see, we've gone through types of monsters. Oh, um, so, you've been cast. I'm gonna take a step back here. You've been cast, whether, if, it's really hard. Um, <laughs> it is, this is the, you know what, actually this does bring up a very, very good point. Expect the unexpected, these stops will happen within a maze. The lights will turn on, right? Someone um, lost their child. Someone lost their child. Someone lost their shoe. Someone fell and not hurt. Oh, it is yes. your job, it is your job as a talent to kind of snap out of yourself and be like, okay, I have to help the real world now, yeah. right? Whether that's us, whether you're like, oops, I'm talent, I gotta either go back into my break room, green room, my dark hallway, whatever, and let security, blackouts, my talent captains handle whatever emergency is going on, to be really just dropping it and being like, even if you gotta do it silently and just be like, hey, I need you, right? Because the difference, this is where I wanted to go about six subjects uh, previously, but, the, huh? <laughs> Me. <laughs> 
Um, acting, traditional acting, you usually get a cut, right? You usually get a character, you're playing to a camera, you are uh, usually just, you have scripted lines. Within scare acting, you might not get any of that. You might get, hey, you're gonna be a clown, make sure all these people get scared. Cool, awesome, do your job. Like, and you gotta figure it out. So, the, <laughs> what was that? So you been scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, um, and sometimes you do get the luxury of, say, having a scare school, having um, training in regards to your particular maze. And like I just said, sometimes you'll, you'll just get your mask, your costume, go and make it work. And in those instances, what I want to impart to you guys is what you can do is to make your own unique character. Um, I want to start talking about giving your character that name, right? Uh, but when we talk about uh, traditional modalities uh, in acting, method acting, uh, Meisner's technique. Uh, Meisner technique, uh, if you've ever taken uh, drama or anything like that, uh, basically teaches you how to live in pretend circumstances authentically, right? Method acting is something that uh, we talk about in regards to like immersing yourselves, never dropping character, never like living within those means of like, if you're a druggie, you're going to like pretend to be a druggie the whole time, and it doesn't matter if you're on break or you're, and you're just gonna stay in it. The problem with that though, this is what I will impart as somebody that used to be a method actor, is psychologically, your brain and your body do not know how to differentiate the trauma if you don't want it back, right? So if you're constantly just angry and nerd and just attacking people all night, you're going to work yourself up. <laughs> you're going to work yourself up into such a frenzy, into such a panic state that you're not going to be able to come down, right? And on the one hand, that is dedication. That is, oh my God, that is so cool. On the other hand, nine weeks of that is gonna take its toll. Nine weeks of that on your cast is gonna take its toll, right? Nine weeks of that on your body is gonna take its toll. So I prefer to create a character that is beyond myself, right? My personas or my characters that I create for whatever maze, street zone that I'm in, um, I like to, it's not me, it's completely separate of me. Whether I'm building it based off of a historical reference, whether I'm building it off of a particular prop, right? Sometimes I've created a character based on um, a pair of shoes that I happen to wear. She would wear these shoes, these shoes would fly. So, how would I build from the shoes up top, right? And that's building out aesthetically. So, building internally, when you don't have the choice, right? You're given a costume, you're given a mask. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain calm and stay in the immediate area. We're having a long activation that are currently investigating. All precautions, <laughs> the fire department has been notified. Please stand by for further instructions. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So, I don't think that communicated anything was actually on fire. All right.
Thank you for your cooperation. Yes, sir. 
I have all this as an observer, mm -hmm. more of a, a monitor, not a scare actor. Mm -hmm. um, but watching people like Apostle and so on, you know, there's so many other people around here. It seems to me, and this is the fact that I have a live action role play. Mm -hmm. You get a character, a basis of a character, and then you're building upon that. Exactly. And you're doing a lot, almost like a live action role play kind of thing. So in the street zone, you kind of get the luxury of your your audience, your guests is ever changing. Or they come back, right? You get your favorites. You get those people that love to watch you scare, love to interact with your character. And they're going to come, and they're going to say hi to you every night. And then they're going to come, and they're going to take a picture. And then they're going to come, and then they're going to like let you know that they're going to be back next Wednesday, too. And then they're going to come, and right? And you have to make those interactions special. You gotta make them be me. You can't be like, dude, I get it, okay? Like, no the way, thanks. Like, you can't do that. Not only does that ruin your fun, honestly, guys, not only will it like ruin your night to have that kind of attitude, you can, um, you can attack something like that or you can resolve something like that within your character. Oh, darling, it's so good to see you again, but you know what? I got a lot to do. I'll see you later, okay? I'm sure, or my favorite is, oh, baby, I'm sure you're so busy. Uh huh. You got so much to go see and do. I'll be here waiting, okay? Now you run along. You don't want to be late or anything, and you keep going, right? <laughs> You're free! <laughs> In a way, you can't really do that, right? Um, I, have, I saw a hand up here. Yes, sir. of I can hide behind my curtain, I can send my double, hey dude, you've been on break for 45 minutes, you go, you go deal with these people, you know? You get that little respite, whereas on the street, those respites are harder to find. Not only might you be the only one, right? You might be the only character, the only bride, the only witch, the only vampire out on the street, right? So if you leave, now nobody sees that character. And you have been, you know, in this beautiful costume and this great makeup, but you're like, oh, I don't need to be, there's like a, there's a skull guy out there, he'll do it. No, they want to see you. They want to cast you, right? The guests want to see you. They want to get those pictures. They want to see your brand of scary. So you want to push. Sometimes you're out there an hour, hour and a half, if you're like, for lack of a better term, ballsy and back in the day, like I remember monsters used to go for two hours at a time and then go back, take a little bit of a respite and then go back out on the street, slide and this and that and ah, sliding, tactics. Now we can start talking about tactics. You've been cast, you know where you're at, you know what, um, what, what uh, vision you're going for, whether it's time arrow, whether it's, um, you know, a particular um, uh, uh, scene that you're portraying, right? Whether you're the antagonist, whether you're the victim, whether you're, you know, the um, the person that's going to get them out, right? Sometimes we have that in a maze or in, in a street zone, the heroes, right? The, oh, I'll get you out, you know? You're not always going to be the scary monster, right? But that does not make you not a scare actor, right? Because you are involved in the scare. You are still participating in the scare, you are still moving the scare forward, right? Um, all right, let's see, we talked about the crowd, we talked about, okay, your inner monologue as a character. Why would I need an inner monologue? There's like five minutes they're gonna be in here. Like, who cares? When this class came up, one of the comments I saw within the Instagram uh, feed was, I just go out there and be scary. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> um, we're like, but really, what does that mean? What does that mean? I go out there and I be scared. <laughs> what is? It? I'm genuinely asking. <laughs> okay, me, mad, right? You convey an emotion, right? You're conveying an emotion. What other emotions would we be utilizing as scare actors? Other than, other than mad, I don't want to hear mad, angry, or sad. Okay. 
lots of happiness, like the smiling. Okay, happiness. Why would we impart happiness as characters? Uh, because generally, if it's going to an extreme, it's actually going to be like big scary smiles. Right, like we saw Sparrow, right? Sparrow was happy. Right, huh? People just aren't happy in general. Right, it's, 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 it's uneasy. <laughs> to like see somebody in, a, in an extreme emotion, right? Whether it's like extreme happiness or extreme sadness, we get to push those envelopes. What's another emotion other than happy? Arrogance. Arrogance. What was it? Arrogance. 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 How would we portray arrogance as a scare actor? Like what type of monster or what type of character would be an arrogant type of character? Yes? Uh, in not Superior Part of the Goblin, they could be like an arrogant king character. Right? You could be asked to be royalty, right? Royalty would be arrogant, right? You could be a monstrous, mad king, right? That just taking over and at that point, when you are asked to be a king, what are things that you can pull personally that would show your individual king? Shout it out. A name, right? Huh? Pride. Okay, that's a that's an emotion. Pride. You can you can make him a prideful and arrogant king. You can give him a name. Depending on your embellishments, right? You can make them your own. What you choose to wear every night. How you work collaboratively with your makeup artists, right? Typically, you very rarely do your own makeup. I've never really done my own makeup. Maybe in a few home haunts I have. But professionally or in corporate haunts, you're typically assigned a makeup artist. So now you have a relationship with that person for the next nine weeks, right? Collaboratively. It is their art. It is your character, right? Or the character you're looking to portray. So, when doing that, how are you going to come at your makeup artist? Are you going to come with a bunch of ideas? Are you going to wait? Are you going to, do you think you'll get instruction? Or, exactly. If you guys didn't hear Sparrow when she said lunch, um, you got to ask them, you got to work collaboratively. This is their art and your face, right? You got to wear it. But they gotta do it, right? And they're gonna want to build, just as you want. You were in this class wanting to learn what aspects you can, um, uh, or what tools you can use to make your characters bigger. They want to make their heart bigger, right? Yes. Whenever you get makeup and you get a slightly different part, you really like that. Point that out. And you keep doing that. Eventually, you can narrow it to a combined what you like and what they like. That's a super great tip. So if you work collaboratively with your makeup artist and you guys work together, right, you happen to see, oh, there's a bloody nose, there's a characterization, there's a particular color palette you're using. Oh my god, thank you so much. This looks great. Can we do this again tomorrow? Or, oh my god, I got great feedback on this last night. Can you do more blood? Or, or like, oh, this didn't really read. Can we do, you know, and ask, like, ask them, is, are there things that you want to see from the character? Um, at not Scary Farm, we do get a luxury of like, some of our artists do come out and they observe us scare, they observe, they, they will want to see their work in action. You get to ask them. You can go back and be like, hey, you saw me last night, or I saw you. Like, what did you see that was funny, or what did you see that was cool, or did I, you know, and, and don't be afraid of feedback. Okay, guys? I have not been doing this this long without not getting feedback every season, without not uh, trying to learn something new every season, without trying to uh, grow as an artist. To me, I think not only as scare actors, sliders, makeup artists, technicians, what's going to make you great, what's going to make it more fun for you is learning a bigger skill set, learning to make those connections. Um, let's see, we talked about Okay, the do's and don'ts of scare acting. Do's and don'ts. Why would we have do's and don'ts? <laughs> Just do. <laughs> so, exactly. Well, safety and boundaries, right? Boundaries within. What will tend to happen is if you come back and say you portray a very well-known character season after season, parasocial relationships will start to happen. What does that mean? They know you, you don't know them. Um, and you want to be gracious. And you want to be like, you, you, want to, you want to be kind to the people that come and see you. Because if we don't have an audience, if we don't got guests that come and buy tickets, 
we don't got jobs. <laughs> we, we can perform for each other, but believe you me, if, if you've been at a Han on a Wednesday or a Thursday night and you are literally performing for each other, it's really not that fun. <laughs> um, so uh, give, uh, do uh, make sure that you are uh, uh, following all safety protocols, right? Yeah. Um, do give your character a name. Create a backstory. Do create a backstory to your character. It'll only um, inform your particular performance, right? Not everybody's got to know all that you're thinking. Just like we're walking around every day being humans with all these like thoughts and all these things we're worried about. Your character's got all of these things that they're worried about. Whether it's, you know, um, I want to get out of this asylum. I want to be the funniest clown on this boardwalk. I want to be the scariest, you know, hag in this ghost town. Attention, attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain calm and stay in the immediate area. We have a fire alarm activation that are currently investigating. As a precaution, the fire department has been notified. We have the fire marshals on site. Thank you for your cooperation. I know. He's, he's, he's learning his script. Do consider um, your character's personality. Is it, is it a happy character? Is it a um, is it a uh, a curmudgeonly character? Is it a character that doesn't even see other people? Um, I saw somebody one year be a completely non-vocal character in a mask, and you think to yourself, "Well, that's not very entertaining." But it is so ominous to see one figure standing in one spot for a long amount of time and having insanity happening around you. So how does your character fit within the within its surroundings, within its other characters, within its um, particular uh, within its particular venue, right? Are you is your character more of a supportive character? Is your character more of a divert uh, a character that is set up to be uh, diversionary, right? Um, Interact in character, right? Seems like a pretty easy thing, right? Shouldn't have to be said. But you'd be surprised at how often it's wah! Wah! <laughs> 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 oh my god, I'm my ball. Wah! Right? And you see it all the time. If you really gotta drop, if you really gotta walk, like take a minute to yourself. Right? Don't do that in the middle of the guest. The guests are paying for a particular experience. They're not paying to watch you in your awesome costume socialize with your home. Like, I know we get tired and I know that, but it just, if you commit, they're going to commit. The harder you go, they can't not. It's kind of like lying with a purpose, right? We're lying with a purpose. We, this <laughs> is how what acting is. Play pretend. We like to say play pretend. Um, but, right, commit to your bit. If you commit to your bit, nobody else is going to say otherwise, right? I've seen some super talented um, street characters and maze monsters never break until the end of the night, until that mask falls off, until that makeup gets wiped off. And it's eerie um, to the respect of like their commitment but it does lend itself. If you can pull yourself out of it, right, psychologically, and you can still be safe with it, hey, more power to you. Myself, I usually like to drop my character, right? If I've been out there for 45 minutes, preaching, clowning, zombieing, right? This, after 30 minutes, is gonna suck, right? <laughs> this, constantly, right? We don't walk like this all the time. I don't run around like this all the time, right? I'm not, hey, get back here. I need to drop all of that, right? I need to let the chaos stop for a second. So for me, um, I like to use tools like music, um, visual tools. Uh, my previous um, scare zone, our venue supervisor gave us a great tool. He said, every night, try to capture a moment of joy, whether that's 
the animal you left at home, right? You got to get a picture of him. Um, a family member, a fun makeup you got, and when you're tired, when you just can't do it anymore, when you're like, man, these guests, blah, 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 you go into your visual cues and you think, that was a really fun skill. That was a fucking cool makeup. Oh, I look really awesome here. Oh my god, I get to cuddle my puppy when I get home. You know, all of those little things that you do to get yourself out, just what we do is strenuous. What we do is physical. It's mental. We are out here trying to not only impart emotion for ourselves, but also impart emotion for other people, right? We're trying to bring out that intensity, whether it's somebody that maybe had a little too much that night, right? They've been scared a little too much. You can see them, but their group is still having a really good time. But they're like, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this. You were mocking, blah, blah, blah. You have an opportunity to turn around that night for them. In character, in, um, in costume, right? You can saunter up to them if you're on the street and be like, hey, what's your problem? Oh, you want nothing fun? And if they don't react to you, guess what? Walk away. Walk away. You can walk away. You are a drop it, exactly. You need to learn to discern those moments as well, right? When we talk about protecting ourselves, you can go hard at somebody and they won't break. That's fine. You're not getting paid by the scare. You're getting paid by the hour. <laughs> you don't get paid on a quota. We're not the cops. You get paid for being present, right? So taking care of yourself, making sure that you take those breaks, making sure that you can pop out of your character, right? You've built all of this. You've built the voice and the characterization and the movement and the physical and this. You should be able to bring yourself out of it as well for your own protection, right? Um, where are my notes? So, da, 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 da. So we've survived nine weeks. We went through auditions. We got cast. We got trained. And now it's November 2nd. Well, now what? Right? Right? Then we're going to have topics, But that's not a bad suggestion because what happens at the mall during, after Christmas? Or I'm sorry, after Halloween? Christmas. Go straight to Christmas. What could you do versus scare acting in Christmas? Santa. Santa. Krampus, the elf, right? There is still horror opportunity there, right? You can move on, like um, I, I talked about at the beginning of all of this, right? Our community has now grown into things like doing meetups, right? You can um, you can do uh, social meetups with other haunters and talk about, you know, getting together on character ideas. Um, if you know of a creator by the name of Story Films. He does photo meetups. Um, there are, um, now within the photo meetup community, I have not taken a lot of part in it. What I do see it as beneficial for us as scare actors is its content, right? Within the social media side, you get the opportunity to build um, your own aesthetic, your own brand, and then working together collaboratively with those photographers, makeup artists, right? Um, so, year-round conventions and events, right? This is July, and we are celebrating Halloween in July for Midsummer Spring. Next, we have Monster Palooza. We have, um, what are some other events? We have uh, Halloween Scream. Oh, no, that's San Diego, excuse me? Creepy IE, uh, Creep IE is another convention. And at every one of those conventions, right, there's an opportunity for makeup modeling, costume modeling, um, scare, you know, being a scare actor for one of the uh, temporary pop-ups, right? And now we're talking about June, July. Um, what else? We have historical reenactments in the spring. Renaissance Fair, that is all immersive theater. That is all things that are going to lend itself within um, your character building within scare acting. So, we have a few minutes left. Do I have any questions, comments? I'm so sorry for the lack of visual representation, but 
I hope I've muck flailed enough up here to keep you entertained for the last hour.